just in case things go very wrong. Himmler hides a vial of cyanide in his clothing. Biting down on the glass will send a lethal dose of poison into his system, killing him within 15 minutes. Himmler's SS fellow travelers also carry poison. They alter their appearances as well, removing insignia from their clothing and slipping new identity papers into their pockets as they prepare for life on the run. Among them are Joseph Sepp Kiermeyer, Himmler's personal bodyguard, Dr. Rudolf Brandt, the Reichsfuhrer's top assistant, SS Surgeon Dr. Karl Gebhardt, SS Colonel Werner Grothmann, Major Heinz Macher, and Otto Ohlendorf, an SS general. Ohlendorf, in particular, is a monster, leader of the mobile death squads known as the Einsatzgruppen that traveled alongside military units to exterminate civilian populations. When Germany invaded the Soviet Union in June 1941, the conquered territory was plundered of livestock, grain, and machinery in order to supply the German Reich. Soviet prisoners of war were not fed, leading some two million soldiers to starve to death. Simultaneously, troops under Ohlendorf's supervision rounded up the Jewish population en masse. Under his authority, more than 90,000 people were killed either by gunshot or in mobile gas chambers. The villains intend to travel due south to the Hartz Mountains in central Germany, there to hide out, then perhaps flee further south to the Alps or leave the country altogether. And this is not by accident. For more than a year, Heinrich Himmler has known the war in Europe could not be won. So he feverishly helped set up a Fourth Reich apparatus to ensure the future of a powerful post-war Germany. Adolf Hitler himself said that the Nazi empire was built to last a thousand years. Himmler and his SS are determined to see that pledge become a reality. In years to come, some investigators will point to a clandestine meeting at the Maison Rouge Hotel in Strasbourg, France, on August 10, 1944, as the source of this hope. The top secret rendezvous was attended by leading German industrials and bankers, among others. But unbeknownst to the Nazi officials and German industrialists at the Strasbourg meeting, a French undercover intelligence agent was among those in attendance. His report on what was being planned soon made its way to Cordell Hull, the United States Secretary of State. German industry must realize that the war cannot be won, stated the document known as the Red House Report, and that it must take steps in preparation for a post-war commercial campaign. Each industrialist must make contacts and alliances with foreign firms, but this must be done individually and without attracting any suspicion. The report went on to state, they must also prepare themselves to finance the Nazi party, which would be forced to go underground. But perhaps the most audacious part of the plan was that German companies would begin operating abroad, all the while disguising their connection to Germany and the Nazis. In this way, they would continue conducting military espionage and systematically contributing to the eventual return of Germany's military might. Those in attendance in Strasbourg were reminded, for example, that a patent for stainless steel was jointly held by Krupp and the American Chemical Foundation. Behemoths like U.S. Steel were beholden to Krupp for the use of this patent and therefore were a likely source of infiltration by Nazi spies. These offices are to be established in large cities where they can be most successfully hidden, as well as in little villages near sources of hydroelectric power, where they can pretend to be studying the development of water resources. The existence of these is to be known only to a very few people in each industry and by the chiefs of the Nazi party. Each office will have a liaison agent with the party. The report continued. The final payoff would be financial ensuring participation by the industrial concerns. As soon as the party becomes strong enough to reestablish its control over Germany, the industrialists will be paid for their effort and cooperation by concessions and orders. The meeting in Strasbourg has already paid off for the Nazis. More than $500 million has been transferred out of Germany to corporations in neutral nations like Spain, Switzerland, Portugal, and Argentina. In time, hundreds of companies will be anonymously purchased with these funds. Vital to the success of this plan is not just the smuggling of wealth out of Germany, but the escape of influential Nazi leaders. This is what Heinrich Himmler is counting on.